Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as Pastor Sean just said in the video, we are starting a new uh, teaching series in our new year called DNA. 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 It's, it's that thing that God has placed inside of every single one of us that helps us become who we were meant to be. People have a DNA. And I just believe that churches do as well. Now, clearly not in the same way that human beings do, but, but what I mean by that is that, is, is, is that churches, there's, there's just kind of like unique things that, that, that God has built in place uh, into us. And so that's really what I want to do uh, as we kind of kick off the new year and as we uh, move forward uh, for the next six weeks, we're going to be looking at Parkwood's DNA. We're going to be looking at uh, the building blocks of who we are, the, the values that God has placed deep inside of us long ago, but that are still there and they drive us moving forward. So we ask the question, what is Parkwood's DNA? Uh, what values did God birth in us long ago? Well, the first thing that I want you to see, and this is what we're going to kind of spend our morning talking about, and I'll kind of take us through some history in a bit, but but the first thing is, is this, that God birthed in us long ago an undeniable belief that leads to action, and it's this statement, that Jesus is our hope. Okay, just turn to your neighbor, just tell him right now, just say, I don't know if you knew, but Jesus is our hope. <laughs> now you can turn back to the person that said that and said, yeah, I know. Jesus is our hope. Did you know, did you know that human beings can exist for weeks without food? We can exist for uh, days without water. We can even exist for a few moments, a few minutes without air. But it is interesting that we haven't figured out a way to live without hope. You need hope to cope, right? Hope is what keeps the soul alive. Now, most people, when we talk about hope, we don't really understand it. We, we think it's wishful thinking, or maybe it's just another word for optimism. It's not. In fact, I was listening to Rick Warren uh, do a teaching on this a while back, and he was kind of drawing out some of the differences between optimism and hope, and he said optimism is psychological where hope is theological. Optimism is what you think you can do. Hope is what you think God can do. Optimism is positive thinking. Hope is permanent trust. Parkwood, we need hope now. We need hope today. We need hope not because you're going to die tonight, but rather because you have to wake up tomorrow morning and live. Right? And we don't want some, some sort of naive optimism. Remember that song in Annie, The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that um, some of you were there. Okay. You know, you know, the reality is sometimes the sun doesn't come up, right? Sometimes life is just hard. And that's precisely why we need hope. A strong, rooted trust that Jesus is who he said he was, and he's going to do what he said he's going to do. So this morning, we're going to take some time, and we're going to kind of walk through this, and I want to show you why we believe that Jesus is our only hope and also then what that means for us today. So if you have a Bible, let's open it up. Go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. If you don't uh, have a Bible with you, there's some in the seats in front of you. If you don't own a Bible, that's our gift to you. You can take that home. John chapter 20, we're going to be there. We're going to hop around to a couple other passages as well. Uh, but I, I, I think I'll start here. Throughout history, there have been many events that have simply changed this life as we know it. Uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall, MLK, and the civil rights uh, movement. Many would even argue COVID as of late has, has left its imprint on the world. And, and all of these are true, but what I would actually argue is that nothing has changed the world like the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nothing. Nothing. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything, and here's why. Because when Jesus died, hope died. 
Like, like I, I, I want us just to go here for a moment. You see, after Jesus was crucified, I, I heard one pastor say it this way, that there were no believers. And I know that that seems like a really extreme statement, but if you actually think about it, after Jesus was crucified, everybody seemingly gave up hope. In all four Gospels, there's not one account of anybody holding on to hope, not one. Nobody was going to launch a movement in Jesus' name. Nobody was going to keep his teachings in circulation. Nobody was going to start Christianity simply because there was no Christ. When Mary and the ladies went down to the tomb on that one very famous morning, they, they didn't go there because they thought he was rising. They went there because they thought he was smelling they, they, they went specifically to reapply in, in, like an embalming oil with spices. And when they got there and they saw that the stone had been rolled away and that, and that the tomb was, was empty, you, you, you got to see what they say. John 20, verse 2. Here's what the ladies say. They said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they've put him. When the ladies saw the empty tomb, they did not think he lives. They thought somebody stole his body. Moments later, two angels appear and they talk to the ladies and they say, no, 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 uh, no one stole his body. He, he, he lives, he's alive. And the ladies, full of excitement, they run back to the disciples to share this news. Now listen to how the disciples responded. Luke 24, 11. They said, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed them like nonsense. The women weren't expecting it. The men weren't expecting it. Those closest to Jesus weren't expecting him to come back to life. All of them were expecting Jesus to stay dead. Why? Because when Jesus died, hope died. And then all of a sudden, something happened that changed everything. All of a sudden, something happened that changed life as we know it. All of a sudden, in the midst of their despair and their grief and their loss, Jesus' heart started beating. His lungs started breathing. Blood started coursing through his veins. Parkwood, you got to hear this. Yes, it is true that when Jesus died, hope died, but it is also true that when Jesus rose, hope rose. You see, I, I, and I say this often, but I think it's, it's just worth repeating over and over. We have to understand that when Jesus came back to life, he didn't immediately ascend into heaven. He actually walked around for about 40 days, making several different appearances, first to Mary, then to a larger group of women, then to the two on, on the road to Emmaus, then to the disciples in a locked room. At one point, he appeared to over 500 people at one time, and with every single appearance, hope was rising. With every person who saw him and talked to him and touched him, hope was rising. It was electric. Hope, it, it, it was infusing the land. This is why Peter would eventually write these words. I want you to see this. 1 Peter 1 to 3. He says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope. I love that. Come on, just say living hope. We just sang a whole song about that. New birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Park, with this world has been on repeat, trying to sell us something for a long time. I mean, we just got out of Christmas. How many commercials did we watch, advertisements did we see that, that kind of had this message that if you buy this, if you go there, spend this, acquire that, then basically their message is then all of your hopes and dreams will come true. Right? Like, like we're inundated this, so what do we do? We say, okay. And we buy it. 
and we acquire it and we spend and we travel and we go. And it's not, I'm not saying for a moment that all of that stuff's bad. It's not. But isn't it interesting that after we do that, at best it numbs us for a moment, leaving us craving something more? Why? Why? Because these are dead hopes. They're not alive. They're not living. They don't, they don't carry on. Like, like somebody has got to hear me say this this morning. Putting your hope in people, in political parties, dead. Putting your hope in employment, dead. Putting your hope in money, fame, power, dead, dead, dead. But putting your hope in Jesus, I know that's alive. That's a living, breathing, fully functioning hope without end. It is a hope that doesn't die out. Why? Because Jesus doesn't die out. He lives. And this is like the good news this morning. This is the good news. If Jesus is alive, then peace is alive. If Jesus is alive, then forgiveness is alive. If Jesus is alive, then freedom is alive. Joy is alive. Love is alive. Hope is alive (laughs) if Jesus is alive. You see, it's so easy to say Jesus is our hope. It seems like such an obvious truth, but as Pastor Alex was just praying, isn't it interesting (laughs) how, 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 over time, we can almost lose the wonder of the gospel. And the good news just becomes old news. Oh, I'm praying this morning that even the most simple statement that Jesus is our hope, that it would take root in us like like it was the very first time that we ever heard this message. Because it is true, Jesus alone, the resurrected Jesus alone, is the hope for humanity. And this value is something that we can actually trace right back to the very beginnings of our church. Uh, school hasn't started yet, right? Starts this week? Okay. I want to I want I want to take you to school this morning. We're going to start early, okay? I I let's go to history class, shall we? But what I want to do just for the next few moments is I I I want to show you Uh, If you haven't heard, our church this year is 100 years old. It started, yeah, it started in 1923. And what I want to do is is I want to show you how how this value built around the resurrection of Jesus Christ and our hope found in him and him alone, we, we can actually trace this throughout our history. Like, way back, 1923. Our church, if you don't know, started with a few brothers and sisters in the Lord who decided to meet together uh, in a house to pray. Very specifically, what is the church going to look like, be like, feel like? Where are we going to go? Seeking the Lord for direction. And interestingly, the very first thing that we can see our church doing outside of that prayer meeting was they held an evangelistic campaign, evangelistic meetings that went on for five months straight. And during those five months, many people were saved. Like many, but it wasn't just then. It wasn't just at our inception. We can literally track this all the way through in the 1950s. We had a pastor named Willie Fitch. Come on, how many people remember Pastor Willie Fitch? Yeah. Willie pastored this church for 30 years. 30 years. And during that time, during that time, he would often uh, go door to door, knocking door to door, just to talk to people about our church, who we were, what we had to offer. This was pre-social media. Okay, so you literally go door to door. He's knocking several times. He'd be invited into the house and men and women, families, individuals would get saved right then and there. We have families in our church right now, family lines that have been saved because he knocked door to door in the 1950s. In the 1970s, really interesting point of our history under uh, Pastor Jack Council, uh, Did you know our church owned somewhere to the tune of 20 buses? 20. 
And what we would do every single Sunday morning is we would send those buses out around the city just to bring in children who were unchurched. Literally, this is how it would go. Teams would go out on Saturdays. They'd knock on doors and they'd talk to mom and dad and they'd say, hey, listen, a bus is gonna come by here tomorrow. If you want, you can just put your kids on the bus. We're gonna take them to church. We're gonna bring them back. It was a different time <laughs> because parents said, sure, have my kids. I'm not kidding. And we would fill close to 20 buses every single Sunday morning. The kids' ministry in the late 70s was almost the same size as the rest of the church. The question is, why? Why, why start with evangelistic meetings Why in the 20s? Why go door to door in the 50s? Why send out a fleet of buses in the 70s? Why do productions? Why do we uh, have our We Love Windsor initiatives? Why do we stream out our services? It's actually a pretty simple answer because right from the very beginning, God birthed something deep into our DNA a value that has never left us and it drives us moving forward and it's this, that the resurrected Jesus alone is the hope for humanity. Alone. But can, can we just have real talk? Let's, let's, let's chat. So here we are, 100 years later. 100 years later, amazing. But if I'm being completely honest, I actually find that our church is in a very precarious position right now. It's risky. It's, it's actually a little bit dangerous because it can be very easy right now, today, to look back at the last 100 years of God's faithfulness displayed uh, through the, 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 the sacrificial service of many who are still in this church. And, 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 we, and we can look at all of that and see where it got us. We have the building, we have the land, we have the people, we have the programs, we have, we, we have so much stuff that seemingly is really positive, and it, and it is, but it can be easy right now to look back over the last 100 years and to say, ah, we did it. It took us 100 years, but we did did it. Finally, we've arrived. Okay, I want every eyeball, every earball right here. I want you to listen to me very carefully. As long as there is one person left on planet earth that has not found hope in Jesus Christ, we have not arrived. Okay? We have not arrived. Like, we, we cannot afford, we cannot afford to take our foot off the gas pedal. Not now, not ever. And the moment we do, we are in serious trouble. Serious trouble. We would be forsaking our own DNA. We would be forsaking the very gospel message of Jesus Christ. We must press on. I was, uh, many of you don't know, I actually serve in a leadership role in the uh, Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. I'm the uh, section pastor for Windsor, Essex County, kind of up to Chatham and around. Um, and uh, in the fall, I was at a, a PAOC leaders retreat, and during one of the, the sessions, this, this quote was used, and oh man, it just left such an, an imprint on me. I, I wanted to share it with you. Bob Jones says, no church has a future unless its dreams are bigger than its memories. I just want to read that one more time. No church has a future unless its dreams are bigger than its memories. And Parker, don't get me wrong. Like, I thank God for a hundred years of memories. I praise God for the past. I, I honestly, I, I honor God for everything that he's doing. But what you need to know is that I'm praying for new dreams in the days ahead. I'm praying for big dreams in the days ahead. And simply, here's why. Because what got us through yesterday isn't going to get us through today. 
What God provided for us then isn't gonna work for us now. We, we need something new. We need something fresh. We, we need to dream again. We need to dream again. We need to be going back to those days of old like pioneers, cutting away through the wilderness. This is what God is calling us to. Parkwood, when Jesus died, when Jesus died, hope died. For a, a very brief season, it seemed like all hope was lost. It seemed like everything that Jesus was building towards, his message, his kingdom, his plan, all of it seemed up in the air. Who knew what was gonna happen? Because when Jesus died, hope died. And then that one morning, when Jesus rose, hope rose. And for 2,000 years, that moment, the resurrection of Jesus Christ has birthed inside of the church a living hope. A hope that does not die out. It's not easily squelched. It, it's not put out by a wind. It, it is a hope that continues not just to exist in our minds, but in our hearts. It's a hope that drives us. It's a hope that, that causes us to wake up every single morning to say, Jesus, who are you calling me to? Where are you calling me to go? What do you want me to say? Parkwood, this is our DNA. Jesus is our hope. 1 Peter 1, 3, I'll read it one more time, says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Parkwood, before we leave, and I know right now in your mind you've probably got more questions circulating than I was even able to address, and that's fine. But right now, 100 years in, what I want us to do before we leave is I want us to sing I want us to, to worship. I want us to press in to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Just before we go, let's just attune our heart one more time to the God who's calling us.